Today in this video we're going to be discussing Manning's equation, and specifically Manning's end coefficient, otherwise known as the roughness coefficient, and the slope. By the end of this video we hope to show you how Manning's equation works, as well as what factors go into this equation, and how some of those factors might affect the overall outcome. To start, it's probably helpful to understand what Manning's equation actually is. Our book, Elements of Physical Hydrology, defines it as an equation commonly used to calculate channel mean velocity based on channel geometry and roughness. In other words, Manning's equation helps find the flow rate in a channel based on how big the channel is, as well as what the channel is made out of. As you can see in the illustration, flow rate Q is equal to velocity multiplied by the area, but we can also break this equation down even further, which we will cover next. Like I said previously, Manning's equation isn't as simple as it initially seems, because it does break down into more parts than what you can see in the simplified version. For instance, our velocity v is actually made up of three parts, hydraulic radius, slope, and our end roughness coefficient, each of which we highlighted in red. This gives us a velocity that is equal to 1.49 times the hydraulic radius r to the two-thirds times our slope to the 0.5 divided by our end roughness coefficient. Our area also breaks down to length times height, which is also highlighted. All this being said, you can see how this can complicate solving Manning's equation. And moving on, now that we can see what goes into the equation, let's check out how changing variables can affect the outcome. The first variable we will talk about is slope. Slope is very important because it is the steepness or gradient of the channel, and even small changes in slope can cause a very different outcome for Manning's equation than you might expect. As you can see here, a simple change from 0.5% slope to a 2% slope creates a huge difference in our flow rate Q. To test this, we used an open channel flume in St. Cloud State University's hydrology lab to show what happens to Manning's equation when you change slope. We did this by using two different yet similar situations in which we kept all other variables the same and just changed slope to see how it affects the system. In this animation, we left slope at zero degrees. The channel is moving very slow and with a higher depth. The second animation shows a much higher slope of four degrees moving a lot faster. As you can see, by simply changing the slope, we get two incredibly different looking channels. So you can clearly appreciate the importance of slope in Manning's equation. The other important variable we wanted to talk about was Manning's end value, or the roughness coefficient. This value is basically the friction that the surface of the channel has on the water running through it. Unlike slope, when we increase our end value, our flow weight will actually decrease because there is more friction holding the water back. As you can see in the calculation, a simple change from an end value of 0 0.006 to 0 0.04 gives us very different Q values. We wanted to see what a modest change like changing a rocky bottom to a grassy bottom might do to Manning's equation. Although it's hard to see a difference in the video, this calculation shows how a simple surface change does have a major effect on Manning's equation. As we've seen so far, slope and Manning's end have very different effects on our overall flow rate. Previously we saw that by increasing slope our velocity goes up and in turn so does our flow rate. On the other hand, if we increase our end value, our velocity decreases and therefore gives us a slower flow rate. These direct and inverse relationships are important to keep in mind when thinking about Manning's equation. This ties into our final section on uniform flow or conservative flow. This means that in our open channel, if we change one variable, then it will also affect the other. But we don't actually change the flow rate itself, even though the channel is in fact looking different. As we look, we can see that the depth or area is higher in the upstream, but since it is higher upstream, our velocity also has to decrease. On the contrary, the downstream portion's velocity is very high, but as you can see, the depth has also decreased, therefore staying uniform. In conclusion, we've learned that on top of being super fun to make videos about, Manning's equation and its variables are critical in determining the flow rate of a uniform channel.